everybody. My name is Edward S. Redcar, the host of Edward S. Redcar's Entertainer Chat. And I have the extreme pleasure today of talking with Kelly Poling, actress and uh, stunt person, weapons, fencing, violinist, uh, probably only to name a few, which probably there's a lot that you and I, you in the audience and I, we don't even know about, but we'll, we'll, we'll try to discover a little bit more as we go on. So um, Kelly, uh, welcome to the show. Uh, it's a pleasure to have you be here. And it's a pleasure you... to be here. Well, thank you. And it's a pleasure for you to um, uh, graciously accept the offer, my invitation for the show. And um, yeah, um, uh, I, I see that you're busy on your, your uh, social media, different things that you've been doing. And what I like to do, like when I start my shows, I always, I always like to find out whether they're a musician, singer, actor, actress, musician, producer, director, you name it, how they got interested in the business. I mean, even before they got into the business, how they got interested in what they do. So uh, this is sort of like, a, let's see, I got one, two, three, four. I sort of have a five-pronged first question. So I'll, I'll ask everything all at once, and then, then you can go over it go over it a little bit, you know, one at a time. So uh, what I'd like to know, and I'm sure all my viewers would like to know, is how did you get interested in acting and stunt work and weapons work and fencing and being a violinist? And I'm sure maybe I left something out, but, uh, <laughs> but <laughs> I mean, you're into so many things that that's, that's, you know, that's all I can remember right now. But if you have anything else to add, go ahead. So uh, first off, how did you get interested in acting? I think we're all, as kids, we're all just natural entertainers. We want to put shows on for our parents or our friends. And I started young like everybody else. I did theater at the community center uh -huh. where I grew up in Ohio. And um, I was lucky enough, even as a kid, to get cast as the lead. I don't know if it's just because I'm a ham, but it started, I think that's, where it starts it's just you you're just if some people are born show-offs I guess right. well <laughs> I, I think it's safe to say and maybe you would agree probably you would agree that I mean to some extent those of us in entertainment uh we are like hams I mean it's almost like we need it right it's like we almost feed off of it in some way yeah I think well I think it's that and it's like a it's I had a lot of friends that I would I would do things with and it was more like I have something to share I have something or you know let's try this together it it, it turned out you know who wants to I don't like like one person shows like that's just not me I'm that nothing against them but it's not I don't like it to be always about me I like it to be is it's about us and um I don't know I've always liked I'd like to contribute to things that are bigger sometimes is I guess that's a way to put it mm -hmm. and um I'm not shy I don't think any of us are shy otherwise we'd be, yeah. we wouldn't be doing what I, we're doing right I think sometimes that's like the big thing it's like you're you're not afraid to put it out there you're not mm -hmm. afraid to make a fool of yourself or make mistakes because it's Sometimes it's funny. Sometimes you learn. Oh, yeah. Sometimes yeah. you know it's just your friends and what bad could, you know, there could be some probably negative consequences, but probably yeah. none that I cared about when I was a little kid. Right, right. <laughs> Plus, I mean, you're all amongst friends and everything. And yeah. you know, if uh, somebody slips up or make a mistake, it's like, what? Well, okay, big deal. Uh, Let's keep going uh, on. We all, yeah. we all know our personalities. Have at it, go, right. go do what you do, right? Right. And if you can make somebody laugh or smile or, you know, um, if you can entertain people or tell a story, I always love that. Right. Even when I'm not, even when I'm not acting, it's yeah. like, it's fun to do. Yeah. And uh, even fencing is telling a story. Music is telling a story. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. In, in, in some way, in a different way, it's all telling a story. Yeah. Uh, going back to what you were first talking about, uh, uh, about liking 
uh, performances that have a lot of uh, cast in them instead of like a monologue. Uh, uh, to me, it seems like, um, like uh, I don't know how you feel about it, but say like monologues, even though they can be long, you know, and there's a lot of things to remember one thing after another, and you're out there all on your own, just you. Uh, to me, it seems like, uh, like a dialogue between actors. To me, it seems like uh, it's it's a little bit more difficult because you sort of have to remember where your place is and their place is, like the back and forth. But a monologue, it's just you. You just go through it, right? Uh, I don't, you know, I don't know what your take on it is, though. Well, personally, I don't like monologues, <laughs> <laughs> but it's telling a story, and it's and I the the good. I, I think the the thing that I do like about monologues is being able to draw emotions from people uh, by yourself, but that's not my favorite way of doing things, but it is, it's still telling a story mm -hmm. and I don't mind monologues. I, I feel if it's like a bigger part of something else, like the little piece of a puzzle instead of just the one monologue. Oh, right. Right. I feel like that's so, I would be so boring. <laughs> <laughs> No, I, I, hard, I, hard, I hardly believe that. I mean, you're you're posting so much about different things, doing this and that. I mean, uh, to me, I would I would hardly call you boring. I I think uh, I think uh, people are interested and want to watch what you're doing and the different things you post about. So you know, uh, uh, I think each of us as performers and whatever we do, actors, actresses, musicians, whatever. Uh, I don't know your opinion on this, but to me, it seems, uh, it, it sounds cliche, which it probably is. They always say that we're, that we're our own worst critic. So what we think is boring or not very good is like totally seen as opposite to everybody else out there. Uh, whatever. Uh, we are our about. own worst critics for sure. Yeah, Sometimes yeah. even our worst performances could be the performance of a life <laughs> for somebody else, you know, watching it that could just provoke a memory or a, an emotion that we don't know what we're, we don't know what we're doing when we're doing our, our art, I suppose. Right. So, right. Yeah. so uh, uh, going back to when you said you and your friends would get together and, you know, perform and everything, um, was it uh, more, say uh straight plays just a play or oh yeah uh, did you oh, they were they were holiday plays that you put on for your parents you know oh, when you're okay. really a kid it's that <laughs> okay i kind of got out of it when um you know you get too cool for school right oh. when you get a little bit older and i always loved theater and i always liked to watch my i had a lot of theater friends okay um okay. and band and people in band and um i was a cheerleader so okay. I was still performing. Well, you were performing but different right kinds of there. things. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, were you, were you also like in in high school plays, performances, music? No. no, no. I didn't get back into acting until I became model, and they would offer you, or you would, you know, when you're a model, that you also segue into the movies a little bit yeah because yeah. you know they always need the girls on the beach or they need the girls at the pool or they need you know um one-liners here or there and so you always end up doing some something in the entertainment business no matter what mm -hmm. but um it's it's um i wouldn't call it real acting back in my 20s but it was fun i mean it was entertainment. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, so is that is that the uh, the first way or the first uh, opening or opportunity into acting that uh, you got from uh, like modeling, like you were saying, they needed beach scenes. Yeah, is I think that how you worked your way to what you know. I think it was my first taste of Hollywood in in my twenties, my early twenties. It was the first taste of Hollywood. I was working for a company called Hawaiian Tropic, oh, and we were bathing suit models. But the owner of the company, um, who recently passed, rest in peace, uh -huh. um, he loved the celebrity world, and so we were always doing celebrity charity events. We were always mixing and mingle with 
you know, at ski, ski resorts. And uh, uh, we were at the Cannes Film Festival every year. Okay. We okay. were, we went to film festivals all the time, um, but it was part of our image. We were, our, we had a lot of uh, the product that we were promoting, Hawaiian Tropic, mm -hmm. uh, placed in movies. So we were always part of the entertainment. And I guess that's, it's, it, I was never really a starstruck person ever. I might have had one or two people that I was like, oh, my gosh, that's amazing. But it's usually for something outside of acting. Yeah. But well, so I was always I was always um, around the entertainment business. Okay. I never I never really left. OK. okay. Um, even so, though my degree is like medicine from oh, college. Really? Oh, really? I, wow. That's, <laughs> I, that's I, very impressive. Wow. Wow. Yeah, I studied for I studied for a while. I actually didn't do anything serious until I until I left college. Okay. Um, okay. And then I went on, you know, and then I think my first real big gig was I went on tour with Madonna. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Wow. As, as, as a chef's assistant, nothing, cool. but it's still, you're around entertainers, right? That's you're right. around musicians and artists and, you know, well, you got traveling the, the world. I just right. have been traveling the world since I was such, you know, yeah. since I well, got out of school. Well, well, <laughs> Well, like they say, it's work any way you can get it, right? Whether you're yeah. working behind the scenes or whatever. Wow, that's cool. That yeah, cool. I mean, I did end up doing a, a couple extra things on that tour, but it was it was a lot of fun. I met a lot of people. Okay. Um, okay. I I was around a lot of Hollywood people on that tour, okay. so you get you get to meet. You know, I I think my you think it's a really big circle when you're doing a lot of different things but it's yeah. amazing how the circles kind of intertwine with each yes. other yes. and how every it's a small it's so small <laughs> it is. no matter I, what i seem to be doing in my life it's sort of inner it was interchangeable with the entertainment industry that's and right. I, that's right in, in fact um uh, uh i have a good uh, quick story to tell about that like recently mm -hmm. Um, I attended uh, well, I, I attended several film festivals like within the last year, but one of the film festivals I attended, um, uh, I have this one uh, follower on, on Instagram and she's like an actress singer. And so uh, uh, she lived in, in the same state where this film festival was. And so I just happened to mention to her in passing, I says, oh, uh, I was at such and such a film festival. And, you know, I mentioned like, um, you know, where it was. And so then she says, oh, she says, I was involved in that like uh, 12 or 13 years ago. And I know like the festival director and she named him off. And I says, I says, oh, my God. I says, I've met him. I says, I know him, too. And it's like here I'm, you know, living like hundreds of miles away from her. And I've never met her personally and uh, only, you know, chatted on Instagram. And like you say, it's a small world here. We both know the same person, but for her, it was like 12 years ago. And it that, yeah. that just like blew my mind. I says, oh, my God. <laughs> right? Yeah, it's and, amazing how small it is, how yeah. small the, and how interconnected everything I know. is in our careers, I know. right? Yeah. And she uh, worked, uh, I think uh, 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 they needed people like, like to hand out the awards, you know, like the film awards at the end of the festival. And she says, oh, she says, uh, me and my sister both handed out the awards, and my sister's an actress, and she and she lives out in this state. And I says, "Oh my God, oh my God!" You know, it's like I, you know, I couldn't believe it. And like you said, it's a very, very, very small, tight, well, tight knit too, like tight knit mm -hmm. community, right? I mean, more or less. Yeah, it, it's um, it's good to be in it if you're if you have personalities like ours. <laughs> <laughs> we have an you. outlet right we I'm have an not outlet worthy. I'm not worthy. thank you <laughs> yeah yeah and well uh, another thing like uh, you started in uh in acting so uh you're also involved uh in uh in stunt work and, and weapons work so how how did that all develop from from your acting what uh, what got you interested in that part of it okay well i'll clarify a little Stunt work. Yes, I have done some stunt work. Okay. I have some lovely scars from it. Oh. Um, no, no, it's okay. It's good. It's good. It's a very stunt work is a lifelong endeavor. You you study the people that do stunt. Oh, 
should be put on pedestals because mm-hmm. uh, they study their entire life for maybe a few particular things that they do, like driving a car or jumping off cliffs or diving out of helicopters. There's a lot of people that do a lot of different things, yeah, but it's yeah. a lot of training. It's a lot of specific training mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. it's very dangerous and yeah, I know. I they would, need more I recognition. Would I would do it. I know, right? I have done some stunts okay. and I've trained a long time before I actually did them. Okay. Or it's something that I just do, I just do as part of my, I've been doing it since I was a kid. And okay. it just, it segued into the movies. Um, I'm more what they call like an action actress where okay. Okay. I do the fights and I do the weapons and I yeah. do, yeah. because I've done that my whole life. <laughs> right, right. I grew up in the Midwest and I started with, you know, with my father, my military father, and okay. uh, I okay. learned how to shoot guns and bows and arrows and okay. not well, I use <laughs> knives and you name it. I learned so, so, some so, weapons. So and, you're like a marksman? Could I safely I, assume that or what? Um, There are people uh, that are way better like than a, me, like but I can do, I do marks? very well on my own. Yes. Okay. Okay. <laughs> um, I like to compete. I started, I, I was interested you know, when you're a little girl, you don't really like the sound of really loud guns and gunpowder. I mean, some people do, but yeah, yeah. I wasn't. I like the shiny swords. <laughs> so oh, okay, okay. I grew up love, like a sword lover. Uh, and yeah. my father didn't really know how to use the swords. Oh, okay. He was just all guns, all kinds of guns. You name okay. it. He, he knew how to, to use it. Yeah. And he taught my sister and I. Okay. Um, and he taught us bow and arrow. He taught us... Uh, you know, anything having to do with loud, smelly things, mostly. <laughs> well, I, I don't know if I'd call a sword a loud, smelly thing. I, no, no, is, swords yeah. came later. So swords were just something that I liked. I okay. thought they were pretty, you know, you you run into people that like swords and they'll show you kind of how to use a sword. But I always wanted to find somebody that would teach me how to how to use really use swords. Right, right, um, right. I did a little, but it wasn't until I found the Martinez Academy of arms in New York city that I learned how to fence. It's quite different. Classical fencing uh-huh. is, is an art form. And, uh, I literally have been training. I train all the time and I still compete with them. I still compete in classical fencing. Uh-huh. Um, uh-huh. our next trip is in Sicily. Ooh, um, cool. we cool. usually go somewhere and, uh, the Academy rents castles and we fence and we fence for, we train for a week long and we, we have, our own little competitions with each other. Uh-huh. We don't really do it to compete though. We do it just to see it's more of a personal, how am I doing? Am I getting any better? Right, am I perfecting right. this art? It's not really about the competition. It's more about the art form itself. Yeah. So, and I love that. So um, I do have a competitive spirit, however, and I like to go to the desert and compete with um, other kind of weapons. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> I do have that, like, and I. Well, I what, do they, uh, what do they call them? Like uh, uh, nunchucks, or do you do that too? No, well, no. I like I like that kind of martial art too. However, the the different, yeah. the kind of weapons you would do in a desert where nobody, you know, you don't have to worry about. Oh, okay. Other, where, where, you won't have to worry about hurting anybody okay, or anything. Where or, gets, like where nobody gets hit, like or hurt, like yeah. from fifty feet of you or something like that. Correct. Yeah. That okay. kind of thing. So I do yeah. love competition. Yes. Um. I just more, when it comes to fencing, I like to just more perfect the art itself rather than win the bout. Yeah. Even though winning the bout is sort of fun, but I'll take the art over the, over the win any day. Uh, I um, but I've been doing that since I was a kid. Oh, uh, okay. Not so much with Martina's Academy, but that was my, that's my common thread. I guess you can call it that I've, mm-hmm. I've, I've always had a love for it. Okay. Um, which segued into the movies when I moved to LA. I moved to the LA right before the pandemic. Oh. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> I, really got to, I really got to get to know LA, right? Oh, before yeah, they, well, yeah. I didn't. I'm, I'm, I'm kidding. I they shut <laughs> LA down like two months after I got well, here. Yeah. You know what? I, you know what I was going <laughs> to say. You got to know LA without any traffic or people on the streets, right? You right, could, but you, I never could... went anywhere. I got to know the inside of my house in LA <laughs> <laughs> very well. I got, I had, I learned how to set up a, you know, a studio. I learned how to use Zoom. Yes, I, yes, you know. Was, yeah. So yeah, same with me. Uh, that's, uh, that's how I first got into film. Like uh, before 
before the pandemic, I was never involved in film or anything. It was like, like uh, my training is like in the stage, like local community theater, you know, brought up that way or summer stock, but never got into films. But the pandemic, you know, everything shut down. And so there were all, you know, these groups forming that did like Zoom plays and Zoom film. That that That's how I got into it. So, um, yeah, uh, I yeah, I had to get used to Zoom, too. I mean, I I never even heard of Zoom before before the pandemic. Of course, maybe it didn't even exist. I don't know. Did it? Oh, <laughs> I, I've been in the corporate world. I knew about Zoom. I just, you know, auditioning Zoom is, is a whole different animal. So, mm -hmm. but, you know, mm -hmm. it's, a, I guess this is the way it's going to be going forward. Not all the time. The callbacks, I've been, I've been doing a lot of callbacks in person lately. Oh, okay. So okay. that, that's different. I have yeah, to get used to yeah. being in the room and that's where my theater training, where I'm not, right, I don't, I'm not right, super right. shy in front of people. I don't get nervous as, you know, as much as somebody that wouldn't um, be comfortable in a yeah. room full of people. Yeah. I've always have, it's always a room full of people. Too. <laughs> <It's a room. laughs> but, but you um, know, like uh, you're talking about auditioning Zoom and versus in-person uh, auditions. Uh, well, I guess there's, there's advantages and disadvantages to both of them. Like, uh, like in-person auditions, I think that the advantages is that you actually get to see people and be in a room with people but I love that too. Yeah. 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 You know, when you get to like, even if you got a reader that, you know, is reading for you opposite you in an audition, at least, at least you're talking to somebody, you know, even if yeah. you're reading it, but like, uh, like on zoom, like you were saying, virtual auditions and things like that. I think uh, one advantage of that is that you can do like a lot of auditions in a short period of time and you don't have to travel. You don't have to spend like the time traveling like you do like in person, but that that's you know, what I take on it, you know, just the advantages. Yeah, the getting around in LA traffic. I heard yes. stories about how people used how it used to be. And I'm like, oh, I'm so glad I don't know that. <laughs> <laughs> but it's I like this way, but I also like, you know, to meet the people face to face. So I'm glad the callbacks have mostly been in person where you yes. can meet the the people behind you know, behind the project. Um, and I'm, I'm also a producer, so I like to meet the people. I like to see the people in person okay. when we're working on a project. So, yeah, yeah. uh, it's good. It's good that way you like to feel people's energy. And I feel a lot of what happens on stage or, you know, in front of the camera is a lot of, energy work and if the energies don't go together very well yeah. then it comes right through That's right. on your screen so i feel like it's really important to get that right in the first place you and know it's, uh, and it's like uh if you're uh acting on camera and in film it's like everything is like super concentrated on you it's like all the focus is on you like if the frame only has you in it you can't rely on anybody else it's just you looking in the yep. camera and yep. it's, yeah, it's so yeah, it's so different than uh, yeah, than stage acting where everything is like big and big and big gestures and uh, loud talking. It's like the camera is like really super small. Looking you right here, and it's like just move a little bit. And yeah, it's 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 so different like that. And uh, mm -hmm. well, you you were saying uh, uh, produce. Uh, you're also a producer now. Uh, also being an actor and a producer, uh, do you find that say uh, uh, your projects or a lot of or a portion of your is it sort of like 50 50 actor producer 60 40 how, how does that balance no out? i think it's a smaller percentage on the producer scale only because right. i'm i'm pretty picky about the films mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. i want to produce i really like things that i feel would have an impact on people I want to put out something, uh, you know, with with um, a what little bit it? of substance behind it, not just a story, but something a okay. little bit bigger. Okay, I so like that kind of thing. Like something as, as a producer, I wouldn't say, you know, not always as an actor, because I like okay. all kinds of different things as an actor. I mean, I like to experiment with everything. Mm -hmm. um, 
but with the producing part, I like to something that would have a, a positive impact mm. on society. Right, right, right. Sort, you sort know, more like, more along that line. Yeah, sort of like passion project, something that you really. It could be some. For. It could be a passion. Pro it could end up a passion project, but <laughs> but um, yeah. I mean, that's the kind of thing I like to put my money behind, is something like that, rather right, than right. just you know return on return on the project. Yeah, I don't. Yeah. It's not so much about that for yeah. me. And and I think there's probably a definite advantage uh, to you doing that, uh, producing some of your own things, because then. Uh, you sort of don't have to rely on uh, like uh, others uh, like to hire you, audition you. It's like if you've got a, a project that you have a passion for or you want to fulfill or something, it's like you make your own work, right? I mean, in that respect. Yeah, no, it's not even about that. Most of the time, uh, it's not, uh, I'm not on anywhere on the other side of the camera. It's just more about me supporting something that's, I feel has a bigger, you know, something bigger than myself mm -hmm, mm -hmm. is a good way to put it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, I'm going to go back to your uh, 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 phys uh, physical acting, like uh, in the stunts, uh, weapon work and things like that, uh, fencing. Uh, uh, you, uh, you mentioned about uh, uh, going for your training in, uh, in uh, California, in the desert. Uh, I, I, I train... I train almost every day on something, something new uh -huh. all the time. I train, uh -huh. I do um, oh, like firearm even... training. Oh. I do, I do uh, action training, okay. fight, okay. fight whips with Anthony Delongis okay. and Mary Delongis, who okay. I love dearly. And they are amazing. They're stars in their own right. Okay. Um, many years in the business. Um, I like to learn from people I feel are the best at what they do. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. and the fire I am training, I train with a man named uh, Tian Negan, who okay. um is part of the military, and we it's mostly safety. I'm all about safety. Everything's about doing something with the utmost awareness oh, and yeah. safety. Yeah. So that if there's somebody on set that isn't safe or unaware. <laughs> I'll know right away. I know that at least I know the difference. Right. And um, I feel like I can execute a lot of the moves better than most people mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. because I train, I practice all the time. Right, right. Um, when it comes to fencing and sword work, I train not, not just for the movies, but mostly that's for life because that's like, something else that's like another thread that sort of leaks into the movies for me yeah, yeah. uh there's there's a few movies that use a little use swords once in a while <laughs> <laughs> so what i do is i learn how to use the sword properly the way it's supposed to be used the mm -hmm. way it is in real life and then i have somebody like anthony delon just that teaches me how to translate the real way yeah. into for stage and screen. Mm -hmm. So, uh, do you find uh, do you find out like sometimes if you're casting something and uh, you have to do like a fence scene or sword work, or whatever, and say like you're cast opposite somebody that that you have to confront? Uh, do you find out that maybe more more often than not uh, they do everything the correct way, or are there some times where you encounter somebody you're playing opposite? where they're not doing everything like totally wrong, but not exactly the way they're supposed to. It all depends on the stunt coordinator. Okay. It, it's like the, the, stunt, the stunt coordinator has to translate the sword work into a story, into something that you can watch, that you can, it sways you back and forth. Like yeah. this person's winning now, this person's losing. And, oh, evil is is overcoming good. And, you know, there has to be a story there, or it just looks like a bunch of people clashing something that, you know, clashing things around things that look mm. like swords, but it's not really learning how to tell a story with your weapons is a whole other level. Okay. okay. So sometimes I find that, that there, there is that. And sometimes I find that needs a little work. A little, little work. Yeah. 
So uh, even even though you uh, you say you uh, train every day, uh, I see that you post a lot about uh, your training up in this uh, rancho. Yeah, that's with Anthony Delanges and, Delanges and Mary Delanges. Yeah, oh, it's okay. a it's an adventure just to get up to their where where we train. <laughs> it looks like it. You know, it's like you post about it, and it's like my gosh, I said it's like it's absolutely. Like in the middle of nowhere, you know, you don't yeah. see any highways or any like even dirt roads to get into. It. You know, it's like everything in the background that you have a photo. It's like mountains and deserts and like uh, you know cactus or whatever. It's Best like, place to train. Yeah, yeah. So, so uh, I guess that's a good place to train because there aren't any like optical distractions, right? It's just mountains. Oh no, 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 that's not true. Oh, okay. <laughs> For somebody like me, there's more distractions in that kind of location <laughs> than there is anywhere else because I'm watching the hawks fly. You know, the oh, hawks are below okay. you. So I'm like, oh, that's a red tail. And then I, the dogs and the horses and <laughs> the rattlesnakes. And it's oh, like, well, yeah. there's always something that's, I, I feel like that hurt that dog in the cartoon. I think that I would be distracted. I think that I would be as distracted by rattlesnakes too, you know, I mean, <laughs> not only you, I, you know, if I see one coming, it's like, no, nah, I don't think I'm going to complete this fight scene. I'm going to wait until it like slithers under a rock or what, you know, or, or yeah, it it's very, they're very common here in LA. So it's, you know, we see them there every, it, it, during a certain season, you see them a lot. Mm -hmm. You just have to be careful with your, if you have a dog. Or cat oh, yeah. or anything. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. especially yeah, yeah, yeah. They uh, they don't have uh, any like uh, eagles up there, do they? Is that they're not? I uh, haven't seen one. I okay. mean, I'm just getting to know the wildlife up <laughs> in California. <laughs> That's right, because because you're watching it all the time, right? You're yeah, but I love to be in the middle of it. I'm such a nature girl. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I'm super happy when you know I'm among the trees and animals and yeah, even if yeah. they're dangerous <laughs> <laughs> well it keeps well it keeps you alert and your adrenaline up for when you have to use it for the scene or for your fence scene or or uh, weapons work up there or anything right i mean it keeps it keeps you alert you know so you, your guards never down something like that i guess no 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 yeah. well yeah i mean yeah the guards never down but also it's more like i get yelled at you better start concentrating <laughs> but there's a rattlesnake he's like oh that's nothing he goes and picks hurt. the rattlesnake up and you know with it with a rattle with one of the snake things and oh, yeah, throws yeah, it yeah. over the hill <laughs> oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. And, uh, he, just he, i'm getting used to it yeah that, that snake won't bother us again he'll he'll be slithering up the hill it'll take him like eight hours to get up the mountain so you don't have to worry until uh, rattlesnakes are fast I, I don't i think rattlesnakes are fast okay. if he wanted to come back and get us he would get us but right. but it's <laughs> it's fun and it's interesting and it's it's um i i love training i'm sometimes i it's terrible i love training more than i love you know actually doing the thing because it's oh. when you're actually doing it it's like start stop start stop and then the training part is like keep going until you basically pass out you get so tired sometimes yeah. i love yeah. i love to constantly try and to perfect a move or learn something new and mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. always adding more to my toolbox is a good way to put it i yeah. love that yeah well so i train you, a lot uh, yeah I, I was just going to say that uh, your time spent up there uh i was just going to ask you if you go up there uh to keep like uh, current with your training you know to like keep in practice or is there all time you know, is there also like opportunities when you go up there that they teach you something new like new techniques every or... every time oh, okay. every time i go up there we we move forward okay there's always something to learn okay. when it comes to training yeah okay. well it's a neither a new weapon Every weapon has their own way of training. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And just when you think you've perfected it, there's something else. Something else. And so you're learn. always learning something new. Yeah. Whether yeah. it's different kinds of swords or different kind of weapon or a, a way to use it, a way to frame your face when the camera's there, uh -huh. a way to keep, 
you know, this all the safety features that you have to think about yeah, when you're yeah. doing things with other people, especially if people aren't as experienced as you are. Right, right. So, right. yeah, it's a, uh, it's fun, and it's hard. I feel like that seems to be the thing in my life. I like things that are fun and hard, mm -hmm. difficult. Well, difficult. Then, then when they're like that, and you you've accomplished something, you know, you've earned it, right? You got there like on your It's own. a good feeling. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't it though? You know, it's. Yeah. Like, but I go home frustrated a lot too. Like, God, I should have been better, you know, but I love, I love. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I love well, training. That, I mean, that, that gives you an, when you, you say to yourself, geez, I should have done this. Why didn't I do that? Why did, you know, I should have been better. But then the same with auditions. It's either I'm training <laughs> with my my acting people or I'm training with my stunt people or I'm training with my action people or I'm training with my musical people. I'm always training, <laughs> always the same story with everybody, everybody we're training with. Yeah. Yeah. Well, then, then you also, like you uh, mentioned before uh, that you also do the fencing training uh, down in uh, uh, New York city, which, which you posted about uh, not too long ago. And it's called the, the Martinez uh, uh, Academy. Martinez Academy of, of Arms, of yes. Arms, and so how how long have you uh, been going to that? Uh, as long as forever. forever. <laughs> I've been going to them for a long time. I literally started in Florida with um, an instructor named Kim Moser. Okay. And then oh. it's it, he was just one part of a larger academy, and um, I so I started at Palm Beach Classical Fencing in Palm Beach. And then I would fly up to New York to train with the mother, you know, like the mother and father of the whole thing, uh, Ray and Jeanette Martinez. And um, they're amazing, full of knowledge, like an old school, hand-me-down, mm -hmm. traditional art form. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, when you're training with really good people, because you just feel it. You feel it in the air, you feel it in the conversations, you yeah. feel it in how yeah. they train. And this past weekend, we trained in just one sword, which is my favorite sword. It's called the small sword, um, 17th, 18th century. Mm -hmm. And it's difficult. It, you never, you can, you can just study this one sword your whole life and probably not know everything. <laughs> <laughs> So, so and it's my favorite. And I, 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 we started in the morning and we ended at like ten o'clock at night. And wow. we went, we went, we had a couple hours for lunch, and that was it. Wow, wow. So I'm, it, I'm, not, I'm yeah. still sore. I'm still sore from yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm just unpacking my suitcase, and now I'm repacking. Oh, uh, well, you know, you know, if you're sore, that means that you're doing something right. If you're not sore, you haven't given it your all. Right? Learn. Learning something new, yes. That's right, yeah. Use what, like uh, using your muscle. I mean, you can say you can use, uh, you can exercise your muscles and uh, get used to one way of exercising, so it doesn't bother you anymore. But then you can use like the same muscles in a different way, and it's like, geez, I didn't feel that there yesterday, uh, right? I mean, if you're I'm, using I'm lucky, different... yeah, I'm lucky. I'm always sore. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always so there's I'm always doing something oh okay. well <laughs> yeah I'm always doing one thing or the other and there's always like you know Tuesday Thursday Saturday Shinkendo and then there's that's the eastern and then there's the western and then there's sticks and then there's okay you could just get sore doing the footwork <laughs> oh I believe it I for believe these it. things yeah so uh, you were talking about the small sword the small small sword work that you do now uh how small is that sword? Is it like not very small? Like it's not very small. It's a small. Yeah. Have you ever seen the Three Musketeers? Yes. Um, the sword yeah. that they carry. Well, it's a small version of the rapier. Oh, okay. it's about this. It's it's close. It's a little bit shorter than a foil, okay. but it's very much like what we use as a traditional training weapon called the foil. Okay. Um, it's a system of opposition, which just means you're constantly on the other person's sword. Um, they're a little bit heavier. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They're one of the most deadly swords back in the day because they're very sharp. Oh, okay. And they were used for dueling. I mean, a lot of swords were used for dueling, but uh, 
this is the one that you would you would hear of mostly if somebody was going to have a duel. Oh, okay. And then they go out and they go out for the kill, right? And they go. It's usually if it goes, if it pierces you, <laughs> it's usually over. Oh, so so like if if the tip just touches you and even penetrates just a little bit, it's like it's lights out for, for whoever. Well, I wouldn't say that, but back in the day, they didn't have antibiotics. Infections could, I feel oh, like, yeah. I feel like infections probably got them like the, the, the aftermath of the injuries were more deadly than the injuries themselves. Okay. Okay. You know, but yeah, they were, they were very dead. They're very deadly swords. Mm -hmm. So they're lethal, lethal weapons. That's a good way to put weapons. it. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, you, uh, you were talking about the the, uh, the center there in New York City. So um, uh, is there like a big group of people that that belong belong to that? Like uh, yeah, the one you do there's, up in the mountains, in Rancho, or well, Anthony, we Anthony and Mary, we call them part of the family. They don't. They study classical fencing also. Mm -hmm. Anthony's mastered. Um, making the classical fencing work for him for the movies on stage. He had a lot of Shakespearean experience oh, okay. and he's, he's very graceful on, on stage and screen with a sword. Very graceful. Um, I like the way he, I like, I like the way he can frame himself while using weapons of any kind, whether it's swords or, knives or whatever he was using he's very graceful with it um which is one thing that I, attracts me to one person over another the grace of their of their sword fighting or their knife fighting mm -hmm. or their you know i like i like it when people have refined the way it looks not just the fight itself mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which is another level <laughs> some people don't care they just want to you know whack things around but i i really care about the art of it, the way it looks. Right, right. Another, From, another level that you will attain someday, right? You you keep. I'm it, always it, striving, it. always okay. striving. Okay. Yes. Yeah. That's a good thing. That's a good thing. So so in addition to to everything uh, we've talked about, your acting, stunt work, and sword work, and everything, uh, you've also uh, uh, been to like film festivals, and then like the the. Uh, the creme de la creme, the the Cannes Film Festival, the Cannes Film Festival. Uh, you've been to that, so uh, what's many years? Yeah, what's what's your experiences at the Cannes Film Festival been like? Well, in my twenties, I was going there as a promotional model with Wine Tropic, okay. and um, like I said, the owner of that company loved to mingle with the celebrities. He always had his products in the movies and. Mm -hmm. uh, we knew a lot of people. He knew a lot of people. He just wanted to go there and see people and mingle. And of course, all of us girls had fun. We were running around the croissant, <laughs> having fun, <laughs> taking our pictures with people that wanted pictures taken or for oh, newspapers. Right, right. Or whatever. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. So yeah. I used to go all the time. And now later, I'm going there as an actor. Okay. So I had, I had um, a couple of movies shown at the film mm -hmm. festival mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um last year in a small and a short this year so um i didn't go this year and i'm really jealous because it looked like so many people had fun <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah but, it's, it's yeah it's yeah it's quite the experience so uh, yeah like i was mentioning to you before we started uh, ta uh interviewing here that i went for the very first time this year and then it was like a totally surreal experience. You know, it's like, mm -hmm. you know, you always hear about it. And it's like, you know, wow, you know, it's like I'm actually here. And it, uh, I sort of got the feeling like the first year you're there, there's so much to do, so much to learn, so much to see. To me, to me, uh, the first year is sort of like like a like a training course. Right. I don't know if you felt right. the same way the first time you went. It's like just to kind of get used to where everything is and what's happening. and so many things on the schedule and so many screenings and uh, just wonder what your take on was all on that with everything that well, happens there. Well, I remember going in the beginning 
Um, and it was the same. It was just getting getting to know your way around, getting to know the lay of the land, getting to know who had the good parties, <laughs> getting to know. Yes, yes, yeah, getting true, to know. <laughs> I would say the Cannes Film Festival during the time I was going in my 20s was amazing because they had the Monte Carlo Grand Prix right yes. after that. So we would take the yachts over from the Cannes oh, Film Festival okay. and go watch the Grand Prix, Okay, okay. you know, from a yacht in Nice. And oh, we had so much fun. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it was a quite, it was different, you know, like the first, the last, I went last year and that was my, that was the last year I went. It was quite different. I don't think it was because, you know, things were still shut down a little bit, but oh, um, yeah. then you, yeah. then you start to go because you're going there to meet your friends that you've met over the years. It's yeah. more of a, it's more of a reunion of yes, sorts. You don't really care is. about just getting to know that you want to go see your people. You yes. want to go see your friends. You yes, want to go see, yes. you want to go see what people have made that, you know, and it's not, it's not all about the glitz and glamor later on. It's more about the connections, the people. Right. Yeah. So, so turning, turning 180 degrees away from all of this, I, I have to ask you, I've, I've seen you post about this too. Um, you have you have a, a friend at home, a pet, a pet, uh, a dog, and it kind of intrigued me. He looks like such a nice dog. Uh, what's uh, how old is he, and uh, and uh, what's his name? It seems like it seems like you're always having so much fun with him in your posts. Oh, Byron. Byron. Oh wait, you're talking about Anthony's dog, the one up at the ranch. Oh, okay. that's Anthony's dog. That dog is is he should be in the entertainment business. That <laughs> is Cody. <laughs> oh, okay, Cody. Cody, okay. Cody is is amazing. He's mm -hmm. always he always greets me, and I'm I have to like as soon as he sees me getting ready to do the selfie, it's like yeah. in my face. It's the perfect, <laughs> he, he, it's like he knows exactly what to do. Yeah. Talk about being a ham, right? Or a craving he's attention. amazing. He's so amazing. Yeah. This dog is super smart and he's, uh -huh. he's the other distraction for me during training. <laughs> he's always bringing me some Frisbee or, you oh. know, and he won't leave you alone until you throw that thing oh, down the hill. Naturally, you you want to yeah. throw it far enough where you can get a couple of training moves in before he gets back up with something else <laughs> you, <laughs> but he but i love that dog do you, oh. do you ever want to throw it like far far away where it's going to take him a long time yeah i always play? try to throw it in with the horses <laughs> oh but, <laughs> so it know. takes him a while to get to it. but I, you know because i know he won't get hurt you know it's like he knows mm -hmm. that area and the horses all love him and i try to throw it in just because it takes him a while to get into the corral before right, he gets back right, out right. <laughs> he, yeah, because uh, I can get a few moves in before he makes it back up the hill. Yeah, but yeah, here, here Co Cody, go fetch. Uh, uh, be busy for a while, you know. Yeah, until, but until, it's, until he I never annoys this, right? me. I, I, yeah, he never annoys me. I love him so much. I have a dog here. He's a beagle that I post with every once in a while. He's a red beagle named named Byron. We call him Little Lord Byron. But oh, <laughs> that's he's a, adorable that's too. That's a cute name, Little. Uh, Byron's a cute name, but uh, naming him Little Lord Byron, that's even better, yeah. Well, Lord Byron is one of my favorite poets. Okay. Um, okay. And I called him Byron. I always wanted the name. I like the strong names for the male dogs. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't know, it fit. It fit his personality. And then all of a sudden, people were calling him Lord Byron. So I'm like, okay, well, I wasn't going to go there, but right. okay. <laughs> well, yeah, but uh, when you named him, didn't you sort of have oh subconsciously i'm sure because yeah. yeah it's just one of the names you hear a lot when you like something and you're like yeah i always like that name yeah i'm gonna name my dog that my last yeah. dog was named leo so oh, okay yeah so i just like those strong names yeah if it was a if it was a girl dog it'd probably be like duchess or something i don't know well that's or lady or something oh well yeah either duchess or that, that, I mean, you can't have just a normal dog running around a sow in with full of swords and, you know, it yeah. has to be something. Yeah, you can't just call him like Fido, right? You got to. No, not in this house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, how, uh, how, uh, how long have you had Byron? Byron? I've had Byron for seven years now. Okay. So he's oh. not, he's not a young dog, but yeah. he still goes, he still gets, a, he's, uh, he's, 
Yeah. He's out all the time. He, he walks about five miles a day. Wow. Wow. That's pretty good. He's got a few, that's he's good. got a few walkers cause I'm really busy. He's got yeah, a right, couple right. of babysitters. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Seven years old. I mean, he's still young. I mean, God, he's what, uh, probably about what, 15 years away from social security. So, I mean, he's, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's still a young pup yet. He's got a lot of mileage in him yet. To, he has a lot to, more mileage to go for yeah, sure. Yeah. 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 Yeah, no, I know pets, pets, dogs, whatever. They're they're fun to have around. It's like they become part of the family after a while, right? I mean, oh, he is my family. He's they, the only yeah. one. He's he's during the pandemic. Thank goodness he was he was what I have. So so like uh, in in the future, uh, do you have uh, any new projects that uh, that you'd like to talk about or that you are at liberty to talk about? without giving too much away is there anything like well I, I just i just finished a movie okay. um i have some auditions on my table we we have a strike going on so mm -hmm. i won't talk about things at the moment i do have a few okay. things that are we'll see how things go yeah. i have ongoing projects i have two kid shows that i do that are um they're more comedy and they're 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 not crossing the line. I guess you could, you could, you could say that. And yeah, uh, yeah. I enjoy doing them. Um, they're a lot of fun. Yeah, uh, yeah. They keep me busy. Yeah, that's, uh, I've seen you post about that. That's at a studio in Burbank, isn't it? Where yes. the kid show is done. And I see one in Burbank, one in, one in San Diego. And then I okay. do this other show called Retro Cirque, yes, which is like I've all the eighties. Yeah, it's all the 80s. I'm a host on one of the shows. It's all the 80s show, like commercials and TV shows. I, and it's a lot of fun. I can yeah, film you, that here. I film that here is, in is, my house. I have a studio set up here. Oh, really? Wow. That's yeah, great. we, we yeah. send it in and then they they do all kinds of magic behind the scenes okay. and make us make it look like we're right there yeah, doing it. Yeah. But well, um, I, I like it because sometimes I film that at two o'clock in the morning. You can kind of see it in my eyes, but <laughs> <laughs> well, we have a lot of fun doing that, too. I love yeah. 80s stuff. Yeah, well, that that's the one where you are uh, um, all made up as a mime, isn't it? Yeah, is yeah, yeah, yeah. We have we have the off duty part also okay. where we're not in our mime makeup, yeah. but and yeah, it's your... sort of like that's where the cirque come is, comes comes yeah, in. Yeah, the retro yeah. cirque. Right. So right, right. so so you uh, do you do all your own makeup for that? I think you. Do, oh yeah. Right? Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. That's... So as an actor, you know, we have to be that's makeup right. artists, stylists, right. editors. <laughs> lighting that's right you know, that's right that's right yeah we, even a, designer even, we have to do everything that's right. even, on this end even, we've even become this, yeah yeah a jack of all trades true that's really Ow. true but it's fun to do my own makeup because it's like it's 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 a very creative thing it is. i like to i mean it's strange to see my face all made up like that but <laughs> well you know I but it's also very interesting and different you know, it's very avant-garde. Like the first time, the very first time, well, you might have posted about it before, but I mean, the very first time that I was aware of it, that I came across one of those posts, it's like I was amazed. You know, I was used to seeing you, you know, like you are now or, you know, like uh, your films or whatever that you act in. But when I seen this, I couldn't get over the fact that that was you. And then when I read farther down that you did your own makeup and everything, I said, that's like a total transfer. I never would have guessed that that was you behind that makeup that you did and you know the wardrobe and yeah everything. i wear a wig i wear a wig when i'm when i'm on that so hiding all this hair under a wig is not fun it's, okay oh okay. yeah it's that part that that's like that's not easy some makeup i feel like that's like where the makeup artist would come in can you just make it a little bit tighter on my head so i've don't it feels strange but yeah, yeah, yeah. the makeup part I like I mean I'm an artist anyways I'm a I like to do um oil and or acrylic on canvas oh, I like okay. I like the creative process I've been doing that one since I was a kid too okay. Okay. um I wish I did more of it I just don't have time and it consumes me once I start a painting it's like I don't know where time goes oh, okay. so and all my of... responsibilities go down the drain if I start so, a painting so you so, sort of push everything aside and put everything on the back burner right it's like okay I'm gonna paint now don't bother me Something right like, which right? doesn't 
right now in my life that's not yeah, yeah, that's yeah. like a luxury to have that yeah. that kind of time but it does it makes me disappear for a while and i forget to eat i surprised i still breathe but um i love it i love it and so so if i can mix the acting with the artistry part it doesn't sound like i mean putting on that makeup that's like not a big deal but it still it still connects me to that element of painting something <laughs> so it's and i'm doing it myself and i'm doing it free-handed and mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, it's not difficult to me it's enjoyable right well it's it's relaxing too right it relaxes you it kind of calm you know kind of calms you down makes you what like zen or something and like well you know? no it's a little frustrating that clown makeup is nothing to sneeze at no, no, <laughs> trying no. to get the, the white spots filled oh, in no. and get, the, get no. make sure it doesn't run that's not fun but no. but it's a uh, it is it just sort of um it just connects me to that creative part okay. of me i guess you okay. can say okay. and and then by the time it's like then you've created the person and then yeah. you go down and yeah. you know yeah. the lines are easy you just say your lines and right and well, he the, the, you know the the, the yarnell is his name wish uh he he um edits it so that we look like we're in a studio and okay. we're introducing the next segment, which oh, is always yeah. fun. It's yeah. always fun to see how it all turns out in the end. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that, that is fascinating how things can be like pieced together uh, virtually. You know, it's like uh, like everybody is uh, like almost in the same room. I mean, just. Yeah, about, it's crazy like, how that happens. I know it, isn't it, though? Yeah. Magic. magic. Yeah, the magic, the magic of film. But this is really, yeah. this is really the magic of film. Yeah. Yeah. Well, for uh, everything that we've talked about, uh, um, uh, I always ask my guests uh, towards the end of, end of the interview if there's any last uh, thoughts or words that they'd uh, like to uh, say. So I'll turn it over to you to say, you know, whatever's on, you know, uh, whatever parting words you'd like to uh, tell everybody out there. And, uh, have at it. Well, as an artist, I feel like we all have different goals to be in the business. Mine is just, I hope to make a positive impact and maybe influence people, maybe even young women, you know, to go, to go follow their dreams and, you know, down the right path and don't listen to what other people say if you feel like it's the right thing for yourself and, you know, have enough patience and determination and put enough hard work in and believe in something greater than yourself and um, never forget your why, the whole reason why you're doing it in the end and try to stay on that path. Right. And whether you make it or not, doesn't matter. Yeah. It's the journey. It's yeah. always the journey. Yeah, I I couldn't have said it any better myself. Yeah, that's that was put really really beautifully. That's those are nice parting words for everybody to remember. Or those uh, the young that are up and coming to remember to yeah always have fun right to uh, like you said enjoy the journey. <laughs> enjoy the journey. Forget about the end goal. Doesn't right. matter. Right. Right. Walk in the light. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I would really like to thank you for uh, being on my show today. It's been uh, it's been an, an absolute pleasure to talk with you. And then, I mean, I I've learned uh, other things about you that I didn't know before. Like when I first introduced you, uh, the thing was is that I didn't know that you paint. So now I know it, and everybody else knows it. And I'm sure there's probably a thousand other talents that you have that that uh, would be too uh, too many to mention here, but uh, hope hopefully you'll post about them somewhere someday so all of us can uh, find out uh, more about you and your fascinating career and your talented career. And um, sure. thank you, thank you very much for being on my show today, Kelly. It was a pleasure, Edward. I hope to see you again soon. Oh yes, yes, yeah. You'll you'll see me on YouTube for sure, and on Instagram and Facebook, just just like I know I'll see you too. So, 
always yeah. hopefully my next post will be me playing the violin but <laughs> i'm working my way up to that one <laughs> well i look forward to that i look forward to that as as everybody else out there does so so everybody uh, my name is edward osredkar uh, the host of edward osredkar's uh, entertainer chat and i've been speaking with uh Oh, uh, actress and a stunt person, uh, 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 fencer and uh, uh, a painter. Now that I learned, a painter and uh, 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 weapons weapons expert, among all other things, and been an absolute pleasure to uh, uh, talk with Kelly today. And so, uh, stay tuned uh, for my next uh, interview and that I upload to YouTube and. Uh, uh, until uh, we meet again, have a good day and uh, so long.